Uh, thank you, John. You just could have kept on going. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Uh, very pleased to be here. But I have to tell you, it's, uh, it's really hard to compete with uh, the great company. It really is. It's difficult for you to pay attention. I get all that. But I have to tell you one thing. That at 4 o'clock today, Hamilton time, 5 o'clock our time, the mayor of Hamilton will be donning his rider jersey at a city council meeting, meeting and raising the rider flag, the rider nation flag, over the city hall. I think that's fantastic. I love winning bets. Great. We're really pleased to talk to you uh, today about a really jam packed 2013. Fantastic year in so many ways. But before I do that, I want to introduce a select group of outstanding citizens, my colleagues in the City Council. They're here with me this morning. We have Councilor Barbara Young, Councilor Hawkins, Councilor Burnett, Councilor Frendura, Councilor Murray, Councilor Bryce, and Councilor Flago. They deserve a great round of applause. They are a great group of outstanding citizens that work hard each and every day for you. experiences and different opinions uh, all the time, but we have one purpose in mind that we share. We love our city and we want our city to reach its full potential. That's what we keep our eye on all the time. But as good as our team is, we're not really a team together until we have our administration with us too that works well. Glenn Davies and his uh, staff, many of them who are here today, are a dedicated team that really works to move our city forward with great exceptional customer service. So I want to give a round of applause and acknowledge the great work they do for us today. So this team really does work well together and I think we're on, on track and I'm going to talk a bit about some of the big issues we face this year, some of the projects that we have, and a bit of a reflection on, on 2014 where we're going from here. But before I get into those remarks, I want to uh, Congratulate John Hopkins. Now, you probably know this, but I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, he has been named, uh, got a national award from the Canadian Chamber of Commerce for the Executive of the Year. This is outstanding. John has done a great job with his board of directors to lead our city for innovation, contributions he's made for our growth. So, John, on behalf of the citizens of Virginia, congratulations on that award he received. So over the past uh, 12 months, uh, there's a couple of events that have taken place, some incredible activities, and I'm reminded of some principles and some lessons that we've learned. Some of them are pretty obvious, but they, they hit you, they're important to me as, as your mayor. The first one is, is that the citizens of Regina are always right. Now, whether we get into an election, which we had just over a year ago, or a referendum, whatever the citizens decide to do is the right thing to do. So we decided on the referendum that we were not going to do a public-private partnership, and then the public said, no, we're not doing it. That's the right decision. They decided otherwise to endorse what council wanted to do. It's the right decision. And as every community, when you make a decision, you stand by the decision and you move on. So I'm very proud of the citizens that are, are focused. Take you to our next point. Residents are, are always paying attention. I don't know if, uh, you know, as a casual observer on council, you see people talking about issues. They're not engaged because they're going about the daily lives, building their community, living their lives, taking care of family, running their businesses. But when they're engaged, they know what's going on. They make a decision based upon knowledge and understanding. And for the P3 issue on the referendum, they followed, they understood it. And members of council can know this. They talked to many residents across the city who understood the issue. They got it and they voted accordingly. So people are paying attention. When they choose to vote in an election or vote in a referendum, they know what's going on. They choose to act accordingly. The other principle that we have reaffirmed is that the citizens want and they expect us to act. They want us to govern. I don't know how many times I've heard this, and again, I know members of council will share this view, that people said, well, we elected you to govern. 
So govern. That's why we have this referendum, and that's a legitimate democracy, tool of democracy, I get that, but they want us to govern. So as your mayor and as councillors, that's an affirmation that, that people understand the process and respect the process, so very pleased about that as well. Very gratifying. And finally, uh, another principle that's important is that you know, with clarity of thought, determination, and purpose, and goodwill, we can tackle some tremendous problems in the city. We did this this year with the Army Sherman and Regional Planning. I'll speak about that more in a moment. Very, very fundamentally important thing. I want to sing about Michael O'Donnell, who's not here today, Council O'Donnell, who did a great job with that Davies and uh, Jason and Diane Moore, like we did lots of work to uh, push that file uh, past the finish line. A lot of work to do, but a very good job. So that's a monumental achievement for us, I think. But we work in partnership, and of course the Chamber is, is a major partner that we work with all the time. Um, we don't always share the same viewpoint. We, we, have, uh, we don't always agree on issues, but we have a respectful, good and productive relationship. And we share a lot of common goals that are common to most governments and most agencies. We want to strengthen our community. We want to provide for the best quality of life for our residents. And in particular, we want to create a positive work environment so entrepreneurs can do what they do best. Invest in our community, create jobs, expand our economy, and move us forward. So we appreciate the City Council, the work you do, John, your board, and your membership to move our city forward. So now I want to get into 2013. And simply put, 2013 was an unbelievable year, an incredible year, in so many different ways. So I want to paint a bigger picture for you initially. This is uh, uh, the part that I'm most, uh, I love the most, and that's economic numbers and the economy. So I want to talk about the big picture. And you all know in this room that you know, we have led this country in growth in just about every economic indicator you can think of. We're at the top or near the top all the time. We have the lowest unemployment rate in Canada right now, 3.9%. It's so effectively full employment. In fact, that can be sometimes dangerous if it gets much lower than that. The Commons Board said our, our economy will grow in 2013 by about 5%, though there's some variation in those numbers now. Uh, only Saskatoon topped us at 5.4%. Uh, We're expected to grow by 3.9% in 2014. Again, near the top of the pile. If you want to look at, at indicators of growth and, and uh, sustained growth, it's housing starts, it's building permits. Uh, we have $687 million of building permit values so far in 2013. We have, a, we have another month to go, so we may get uh, near the top that we had last year. But what's interesting in this month is that we have $64.4 million in building permits compared to $6.3 million the same time last year. So you don't think the economy is hot and things are happening and there's building going on all the time? Absolutely tremendous. Another indicator of growth is uh, multifamily units. Growth uh, for being people who are moving to our city, moving to our province, building, starting companies. 1,889 multifamily units in 2013. as compared to 1,474 last year. So we're growing. We're doing very well. Our GDP is at and near the top. Good times in the province, good times in our city, no question about that. So I want to talk about some of the big issues that, that we faced in 2013. This is a different kind of year. Typically, I would talk about, and I will in a moment, about all the building and things that are happening, of the hotels and the restaurants and the commercial sector and the office space being built. I'll get to that in a moment. But there, there are big issues that have come forward, and it's indicative of this council that we are a council of action. We dealt with big issues that came to us, some of them expected, some of them not expected. So you know, with growth, we do have a tremendous amount of challenges and some difficulties. At the start of 2013, I don't know about you, but I never would have thought we would have had a referendum. That was the last thing on my mind and the council's mind. We had other things going on to deal with. And it's all about democracy, I understand that, and, and we, we're glad to see this go forward. We, we chose to have a referendum to ensure we, we allowed those who were concerned to have a say, and that happened. But at the heart of the issue is really, in my mind, how we govern our city, how we fund our infrastructure. Do we want our public-private partnerships to be used for infrastructure or not? That's essentially what the, the issue was, of course. 
And we know that P3s are here to stay, and that's a funding model that the federal government's going to use, and it looks like the province is going away. And we endorse that as a tool in the toolbox, but it's not good for every project. But it certainly was good for the wastewater treatment plant. And the public saw that. They saw through all the distractions and commentary and rhetoric that it comes down to some essential points here. Council unanimously agreed to a public-private partnership as being in the best interest of the public financially and for project management, both for, for construction and for operation and maintenance. They saw through the rhetoric, they saw that it wasn't a threat to lose our water supply, or we're going to privatize. They got rid of all that, and they got down to the essence. It's a pocketbook issue, it's about council leading, and we led. So, very important issue here. So, again, P3s are not meant for, for every project, but they certainly are, are for this project. They endorsed our economic plan, and they endorsed our strategy for growth. So it's very gratifying to see that. The other issue that we faced, of course, and it wasn't that long ago we had the election. It seems like a long time ago, given the activities of the year. Just over a year ago, we had our election. And our council promised that the first order of business, we became distracted because of the referendum, was on housing. Housing was our big issue. And we kept our promise. This council is based on action and making decisions that, that affect our lives every day. So we made some big advances, and within a year of, of being elected, we had uh, a housing summit that was designed to talk about, about how we can grow our community, respond to our growth. We had a 0.6% vacancy rate, constraint to growth, the quality of housing, the, the price of housing, all of a huge concern. We had the Housing Summit in May. We brought together about 250 people. What was unique about this meeting was we had federal and provincial representatives at the, at the, the, the conference. We had non-government organizations. We had builders, developers, all together trying to talk about solutions to our housing issue and how we can move forward. How we move the file forward to continue to grow. What we don't want to see is, is to have what happened in other provinces where they don't respond to that growth. And we have some unique issues facing our, our city, and we do today. One of the outcomes of, of the uh, Housing Summit was our Housing Commission, a permanent uh, commission of, of uh, a council, committee of council, that will guide us in our development. It's not meant to supplant our, our planning commission, it's to get rid of red tape, to make sure we make decisions more quickly and respond to the market more quickly. This is a tangible outcome of, of our discussions, and we're very pleased to see that going on. We've had a couple of meetings already, and we're already getting into some significant issues of how we move forward on some innovation in the marketplace. But what can change to look at, at uh, market housing, below market housing, social housing, affordable housing, attainable housing, and what's also on the radar screen for us now is homelessness. And we'll be dealing with that issue with the Commission in, in the coming weeks. This is an issue because not everybody in our city benefits from economic development at the same time in the same way. We are obligated morally to look after those who can't take care of themselves, and we'll do that in terms of our housing. Our target for housing, of course, is to have 3% vacancy rate by 2017. We're now at 1.9%, 1 and as I mentioned, we have about 1,800 family units that are coming on the market. More apartment buildings coming uh, on stream, so we're hopeful that we'll meet that target well in advance of 2017. Another big issue, of course, I referenced it earlier, is, is the uh, is the Arbor Sherwood in our regional economic development. You know, for many years we didn't have a problem or difficulty in relation with the Arbor Sherwood because our economy was was rising slowly, but not really incredibly fast. And most of the issues we had on the regional planning commission dealt with. Uh, Division of farmland outside the city. And no real commentary on what we're doing inside our borders because we're developing more inside versus expanding our borders. But with tremendous growth since the mid-2000s, everything's changed. Everybody, every order of government wants to benefit its, its, uh, its residents. They want to partake in economic development. And they want to ensure that they reap the benefits. And there's nothing wrong with that. that that's, that's good. So we had a problem with relationships. We had it. Uh, no, we know about this. It's been in the media for quite some time. 
a disagreement on how and when to develop. But we saw the big picture together. Council, administration, we understand the bigger picture, and the Arbor Sherwood did as well. You know, it doesn't take rocket science to figure this out that if we don't get this right now, generations in the future will say, you had an opportunity to seize the opportunity for growth, and you didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? It's a great motivator. The other motivator is, is the view of planning. We have a lot happening here. We have tremendous growth that we benefit together. So we have what I think is a landmark decision, a landmark agreement that's a template for the rest of the province. We have an agreement on annexation for the city. We're going to annex, as effective January 1st, 2014, 8,500 acres of land in the northwest, southwest, and southeast. We have agreement. We signed it off. The minister signed it off. Uh, it's fantastic news. Uh, for those who look for, for more space to, to build more homes, uh, Stu, you know that it's going to be there. You know for, for regional growth, you know for economic development growth, for, for office space, industrial space, we have capacity. Now, it's going to take time to get there, but that's the vision. The shared growth of sustainable economic growth, very, very important. Our official community plan, which we will be approving on Monday night, is another testament of, of working together with the Arbor Sherwood on really a joint OCP. The language is very much the same. The, the idea of growth, the, the map of growth is all the same. We, we are acknowledging their need to grow as well and their support for growth as well. And we have now a working relationship. We have three committees that will work together. Council meets uh, a couple times a year, council to council. We have working groups that will meet uh, from time to time. And we'll have other committees that will talk about applications for growth. But we had no relations at all formally. We now have three committees working together. This is excellent news for us, and, and it uh, really shows a lot of maturity and growth in both the Armour Sherwood and, and for the city of Regina. It's about seizing opportunities and benefiting our, 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 our citizens today and into the future. Another big development that's happening, a bit under the radar screen, but no less important for us, is the RRI, our stadium project. This move is moving full speed ahead, on time, on budget, all going very well. And this $278 million project for a community stadium is the beginning to repeat of a major overhaul for downtown. Once this stadium is built in 2017, we'll begin to see a new neighborhood built up where our current stadium is. And we'll be looking at the CP Labs downtown for growth. No other city in Canada right now has this opportunity to frame and shape our downtown in the way that we can. It's a wonderful opportunity for us, an absolutely incredible opportunity. And you don't think there's going to be a demand for, for housing, commercial development, retail, nightclubs, just hotels, everything. It's incredible. This community will shape that. Not city council, our community will shape that for us. But we'll have an extension of uh, the inner city where the current stadium is. I know Wade, is, uh, Wade Murray is very keen on that. We all are keen on that. But that will rejuvenate that part of the city, the downtown, in a way that, that will be just incredible. Now, speaking of downtown, of course, we have some ongoing issues with downtown. Uh, we have um, a lot of work being done. We've built the plaza. And there's other things happening down there. This is a work in progress in a positive way. We have now a focal point for festivals, for celebration for downtown. That I think is important for all of us to see that and have that. But we also have to work to make this the heart of our city to continue to make it the focal point. We don't want a donut ring of uh, development outside the city and nothing downtown, and that will never happen, of course. But we have issues of congestion, of parking, and transit. We heard a little bit about this last night. We were talking to the Globe Theater about their, their aspirations, their need for growth and renewal. And it all frames around the same kinds of issues. It's about capacity and parking and, and congestion and transit and all those things. So in the months ahead in 2014 and beyond, we'll, we'll see this reshaping of downtown more to accommodate growth, circulation, parking. We know it's a critical issue. It's a work in progress. It is very much on our radar screen to go forward in the future. 
But mark my words, we will fix those problems. This council is focused on the quality of life of our city and our downtown. It will happen. The other issue, again, under the radar screen, but no less important for sustaining growth, is our infrastructure deficit. Now, it's not a glamorous discussion to have, but if you don't have the tools in place, we don't have the growth in place, we can't sustain those who come to our city. Everything from housing, again, to roads, to our, our infrastructure for, for pools and parks, all these are critical to the quality of life for our citizens. You know, the rinks that we have, all these are, are very, very important. We spent about $18 million uh, this past year, in 2013, on fixing our roads. That's a record amount of money. And still there's more to be done. We have a $2 billion deficit, $2 million deficit plus to work on. And we know that this backlog is, is accumulating, and we know we have work to do in that. The Bill in Canada Fund, the federal government, uh, is talking about a new fund for uh, transferring for infrastructure. We don't have the details, and it's not at all clear at this moment when that will happen, and what, will, what the terms will be, whether it's by project, how it relates to, to provinces and, and, and uh, through to municipalities. That's a concern, but it's a work in progress. We're looking at the, uh, the federal gas tax transfer. We know that that will be indexed to inflation. When that takes effect, we don't know. So there's, there's lots of unknowables here, but this council is focused on building the capacity for sustained growth well into the future. So that's some of the big issues that we faced. And we're moving forward in all those files in a very positive way. So I want to go into the more traditional discussion of some of the, the building that has taken place. And these are important. This is a, not an exhaustive list, but there are just some things that are happening. Harvard uh, Development, of course, built Mosaic uh, Tower last year. But this year, they're, they're building the Farm County Can uh, building on Hamilton Street. And work is completing on a $31 million, 10-story city square project, or seven square uh, place, condominium uh, complex on Broad Street, as well as a $30 million, 12-story uh, gardens on Rose complex are happening as well. And there's a new $17 million senior citizen complex in Baton Boulevard. So the, these three projects developments will build a lot of residential capacity in our downtown, and that's a good thing. The University of Regina is building a $51 million student residence. The Global Transportation Hub continues to be developed. It's a world-class uh, transportation logistics uh, center. More garden investments just announced a building that's going in. The SLGA has a uh, building going up. SAS Power just recently announced some of its buildings will be going there, as well as Amterra Recycling. We have a recycling facility there for our, our new program. And uh, CLOS, which is a uh, agriculture machinery manufacturer, uh, one of the top fives in the world, has a uh, parts and logistics center in Ross Industrial Park. We have construction of a four-story, 127-room, four points by Sheridan Hotel on Dutney Avenue. That's virtually finished. And the former Regina Inn is being transformed into the Double Tree Hilton Hotel, which just, was just opened up officially last night. A $10 million hotel is in construction at the old uh, Sherwood House Hotel on Albert Street. And $8.5 million hotel is being built on the northern outskirts of the city. So next time we have the Great Cup, we're going to have a lot of hotels. Lots of commercial, of course, and retail. We have, uh, we have the London Drugs being built in Harbor Landing, and uh, we have uh, Canadian Tower moving to, into Southland Mall and other retail operations going throughout the city. Very much a reflection of our growth in just another way. So now I want to talk about some special events this year, and this is uh, close to our hearts here at the Great Cup, but certainly there's other things that showcased our city. Uh, around the country and around the world. The spotlight's been on Regina for the last year, and in so many ways we, we punched above our weight. Just did a fantastic job. The Juno Awards were here in the spring, celebrating uh, our music industry, and we just did a, an outstanding job. And the volunteers that, that put that together were the same volunteers that worked on our great company. We have some seasoned veterans who know how to put on a party. And this, we can talk about the Great Cup for, for many, many days on that. Now we have uh, some writers here who, uh, who uh, feel the love of our city every day, I know that. But in so many ways our city shines. So very, very proud of, of how we did. The game notwithstanding, the weather even cooperated. The football gods made sure we had a great game. 
but just how Rider Nation responded in every way. And I, I, I did not hear any issues at all anywhere, uh, from security to just people being very helpful to uh, people coming into our city. Uh, Hamilton uh, Tiger Cat fans being treated like they are uh, like they live here, they're just being treated very well. So I can only say that our city shine the best way possible because I'm very, very proud of our city. But volunteers are the key to this. It's what makes us work. And the Great Cup Committee did an absolutely fantastic job. I'm not sure if any of them were here. I know we have some of our staff here that helped on the Great Cup Committee. They deserve a great round of applause and a good job. Well done. So we had a fantastic year, a remarkable year. Some great accomplishments, but I think we can, and I believe we can do better, and we'll do better in the coming years. This year branded our council as a, as a council of action. The files were thick and heavy. This is, I'm getting into my 17th year on city council. This is by far the biggest, most complex year with biggest issues I've ever faced. So our council has done a great job of shepherding this through our administration, very much so. So I want to talk just a bit about 2014 for a moment, and then I'll close off on this discussion. No discussion will be complete without discussion about a budget. And it is, as every year is, a work in progress, and about trade-offs, and about balancing expectations with the ability to pay. But what we have in mind, what we always keep on target, is value your tax dollars and spend your tax dollars wisely. I know these are truisms, I know these are easy things to say, but when we roll up our sleeves and we sit down as a council and administration, it's not an easy process and it shouldn't be an easy process. But there are some pressure points that I want to talk to you about just briefly today that are pretty obvious at the start, these I think they are. We've always said this and I've said it to the sort of uh, ad nauseum, I'm tired of hearing it, but our resources, our tax income, relative to other words of government, is, is pretty difficult. Eight cents of every dollar you transfer to governments goes to cities for policing, for fire, for snow removal, garbage collection, maintaining our parks, our streets, fixing the pipes in the ground, expanding our city. Eight cents of every dollar. It's not a complaint, it's a reality. So when we look at how we can not only sustain what we have, but meet the needs of a growing community, because as I say, we have 8,000 acres we're bringing to our city January 1st. We have several thousand people moving to our city every year. Not a complaint, just a reality. So our costs that we face outpace inflation. We have what's called the municipal price index. And we use this to talk about some of the factors that really impact us, our, our costs every day. And it's fuel, construction costs, wages, benefits, different from the CPI. Just a way to, to talk about how we can build our capacity. So that, that's a disconnect of how we find resources for that. We also have another reality, which I'll speak about, and this is the municipal operating grant. But before I talk about its impact in 2014, I want to thank the, thank the province once again, <coughs> excuse me, for the transfer of the municipal operating grant. No other province in Canada has a transfer of, of the PST to municipalities. And we're the envy of the rest of the country, so we thank the province very much for this. It's allowed us to provide better service, provide more resources to do what we need to do to, to make our city grow. But this year, we have a change in formula, change in accounting, where we're, we're losing about $2.5 million. Now, is that a complaint? No, it's a reality, but it means we've got to find that somewhere else, so it's a pressure point for us. So this budget will be difficult. They're all difficult, but this one particularly will be. Those are the pressure points we have among others, and of course, the expectations that we have for our city to grow. We have the projects we need to do, we know we have to do. So we're gonna balance the ability to pay with what's expected in our community. In early next month, we will, we will receive a copy of made public what the uh, budget is, proposed budget. We'll discuss that, as we always do, with the floor council, and we'll decide and, and vote on this in, in February. But it will be a good budget that balances your ability to pay with uh, our growth. So, in conclusion, 
I just want to thank you again for, for listening to me and let me speak with you and to share with you an exciting year we've had. We have, we have tremendous opportunities. The RRI is going to go forward, and what's exciting about that one is literally going to be coming out of the ground. Construction of the stadium starts in spring of next year. Now, there's an edifice of growth of opportunity that's absolutely fantastic. We also have the North American Indigenous Games happening. It's going to be one of the biggest events our city will ever have by people that will be here. Again, showcasing our city to North America and the world. This is the, this is the North American Indigenous Games. So we have many visitors coming from the United States and around the world will, will see us. It's a cultural and sport activity that's going to be, again, putting us on the map. So I'm very excited about what's happened in this year. I'm excited about what's going to happen in 2014. Every year it is, uh, just seems to be a record year in one way or the other. We are very much the focal and center point of our, our country, and I'm very, very proud to be your mayor. I'm very proud to serve with uh, our councils here. So I want to close by thanking the, uh, the business community for your confidence in our city. You're progressive uh, and you build our community. You deserve credit for the progress that are being made. I look forward to working with you in 2014 and beyond. I want to wish each and everybody a very Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and season's greetings. Thank you very much, and I'll take your questions. Thank you.
Uh, well, 12th Avenue be opened up to traffic again to ease the congestion on 11th Avenue. I think you spoke a little bit about that. Is the City Council looking at improving the traffic flow in downtown which I think there might be a team time. Yeah, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, this is a, a work in progress for downtown. But the, uh, the plaza was originally designed to be two-way traffic. That, that was the intent. But the focus changed for a true plaza downtown for celebrations. And you recall that for a while, it actually was closed to the public. And we quickly realized that, that there is a, a, a need for commerce to take place, delivery of goods and services, a venting for those who want to circulate through the city. So we have a limited access to, to the plaza. But it is, of course, closed during festivals, like the Great Cup and, and Juno Awards uh, and Fashion Week. That will continue to be the case, but we're looking at ways to enhance, enhance uh, flow for downtown. Not just be the, the plaza or 12th Avenue being open to the public, but it's also other ways like moving some buses for downtown, um, doing some innovative things to, to increase circulation. But it is a downtown. Every city in Canada has a congested downtown compared to outlying areas. So we have to be realistic at what, what will be achieved and can be achieved. The Cornwall Center Parkade now has a way to get out easier uh, in and out of there, which is important. You can flow through it on 12th Avenue, not directly. So we are trying to find ways to meet the needs of, of circulation for downtown, but also, you know, it, it is downtown. You're going to have congestion. And we can't eliminate it. We, we can make it easier. We're, we're doing the best we can. You will see things happening in 2014 that will begin to address that issue better. And if I could just add, Worship, you did uh, respond when uh, the concerns were raised by the community that wanted to see 12th Avenue. So, okay, uh, again, I didn't write the question. You're going to think I wrote this question. And Randy didn't like write it because I was right beside him. So here's the question. What is Council's plan to address business versus res residential property tax when Saskatoon is 1.74 and Regina is 2.0? I think it's your, your handwriting, John. <laughs> you know, uh, we've had a long-standing uh, discussion point on this, uh, John. You know this, and of course, chamber members will know this. We're not always going to agree on everything, and this is one point that is not at the top of our list, because we believe that our rates of taxation assessment are competitive with the rest of the country. We continue to have the discussion. It's not our closed door, but we believe that we, in, in many, many ways, are competitive in so many levels. And you know in this room, as well as I know in this room, that people come to invest in our city, they come to our province, they set up a business here. The first issue they face, they ask themselves, is not what is the tax rate. That's in the mix, but it's not the first order of business. It's about being competitive in the marketplace. It's about a lot of other, it's a very complex uh, issue. Now, at the end of the day, the final taxes you pay are a factor, I, I would agree, but it's not top of mind. We are competitive with Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Calgary, Edmonton. On the mix of taxes that are paid, we are competitive or we're, we're actually near the bottom of the list of So, uh, I know it's a concern for the Chamber of this half to continue to have the discussion. Let's continue to talk about why it's so important for the Chamber. We don't discount that. But in the mix of, of how we, we uh, set the, the business environment, we think we have a right in the bigger picture. Okay, I'm not supposed to respond so that way. This is a different yeah. question. It's a medical bond. It's been signed. Do we want to go this? No. Well, Lord, do you really want me to, Lord Ross, do you really want me to raise this issue? <laughs> Oh, okay. It's just it's about the trees in front of our house. Sorry. It's about some trees in front of our house. We'll get on that right away. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you. I really appreciate it. Uh, great first Christmas. Great to